Hello everyone. A happy International Women's Day to all of you. We do hope that your day will be a blessed one and that it will be celebrated in the way in which you would love to have it done. This is a program organized by the Women's Progressive Organization with the theme, You Must Be the Change You Wish to See the World. And this is a quote from Mahatma Gandhi. And because all the women that you have seen here are agents of change, we thought that it is the most appropriate quote to use on this occasion. And on this International Women's Day, it is a day in which women the world over celebrate this day, a day in which they assess, they analyze the trends in order to know whether we have advanced, have we progressed, or have we had reversals. So our program today is intended to look at women's leadership, women's in le women leadership positions in parliament. And we have three panelists who are members of parliament and who in their respective capacity as grassroots women have grown in stature and are playing a pivotal role in leadership in their respective areas of expertise. So ladies, Welcome to all of you in this studio as we celebrate International Women's Day in a different way. I know all of you have been accustomed to having celebrations where we meet and we talk and we have workshops and seminar. But today we want to speak to the women of Guyana out there for them to see us, to see women who have contributed to the development of, their, of this country and who in their own capacities are making changes. My first, uh, the first panelist is Ms. Pauline Sukai, and this Pauline is a member of parliament and she will speak about herself very shortly. The second panelist is Ms. Sheila Verasami, sociologist by profession, the general secretary of the WPO, also a member of parliament. And my third panelist is Gillian Burton Passaud, who has been the first woman president of the trade union movement and who is also a member of parliament. And in my audience are women who are, women who will be contesting the local government election. And so it is our honor and privilege to have all of you in the studio here today. So I would want to turn to Pauline and say to Pauline, hey, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? You know, I know Pauline and we were just talking earlier about the fact that we are now grown women, but I remember Pauline as a very young girl. So Pauline, share with, share with us today in the studio, as well as the Guyanese who are watching us. Um, tell us something about Pauline. Thank you, um, Indra, um, and a happy International Women's Day to all Guyanese women, mm -hmm. and uh, particularly to the core of um, contesting local government um, candidates who are all females in the audience. Um, it is always very difficult to talk about yourself. I, I find that um, I've never really sat down and, you know, put things together about who is Pauline. But um, for the benefit of the audience um, and my colleagues here, I will tell you that Pauline, um, as you said, started out as a very young um, activist of the People's Progressive Party Civic. Um, I've been through the ranks of the Women's Progressive Organization, the PYO, and uh, um, it has been a very um, exciting but yet challenging journey in my political life. In fact, <coughs> I sometimes um, wonder whether I truly had a different profession other than politics, but I, I have been able to balance that and um, I have no regrets with respect to being involved in politics. Um, many people ask me what has driven you to get involved in, in politics. And I've always told a story I told um, many, many years ago, and that is um, I have seen um, social injustice in the society. Um, I've had a very um, traumatic experience seeing a comrade of ours, Basil James, being gun butted and beat, beaten by um, the powers at the time. And uh, I think that is what um, 
gave me the courage and the boldness to commit myself to fighting um, for justice, um, involving myself in political life, and from then it has been no turning back. Um, at that age, I was close to 10, 11 at the time, and um, today I am way beyond I don't know if I should say, but You're I'm way beyond. 40. I'm You're way beyond. 40. <laughs> I'm way beyond 50, and um, for me, it hasn't really um, struck me as yet that things are, are you know, are, are over. I feel that I still have quite a lot of life as it relates to my political work, and um, I have much more to give. But let's get back to how challenging it was um, being a young girl. Um, in my period, or I wouldn't want to say era, but in my period, um, you had many challenges with parental restrictions and um, also the way they view um, the involvement of women and girls in politics. And I could remember my father um, telling me that, um, you know, you're involved in politics, you're on the platform. Um, if something ever happened to you, you know, you're at you, you're at risk. You're at risk when you go on the political platform. Um, my mom, she, she wasn't um, a woman of much words, but I know that she was pretty concerned. And when I would leave home to go to the city to deal with um, voluntary work at Freedom House, um, it, she would have always been concerned about my whereabouts. But indeed, it was challenging. I was in opposition. We, the party was in opposition at the time. And one of my um, area was working with a company named Dialgy. And we were um, the probably not the first, but maybe the second batch of PPP working in the Linden, the linden Dyke Highway and Linden. And that, those days, it was not easy to work at Linden itself. And we've had many um, you know, nice experiences. Um, not so pretty nice ones. Um, I don't want to, to put any fear in you because um, it's all part of the, the work and it is not fearful at the time, maybe because you're involved, but when you reflect back, um, you can consider that whatever occurred were kind of risky or the risk you take, um, you may want to think twice in taking it. But for a person like me, I've always been able to, to take the risk and that was how um, that part of my early political activism um, was situated. Thank you very much, Pauline. Um, I know, you know, Pauline has so much to say. And she started out by not wanting to say, but we can listen to her. Well, I do hope the time will avail itself another time for you to share much more because you have an interesting story to tell. But now, let us go to Sheila. Sheila, what is your story? And how have you arrived at where you are today? Let's hear your story. First of all, um, I'd like to extend to the women of the Women's Progressive Organization and the People's Progressive Party and the women, all women of Guyana, happy International Women's Day. And uh, to say to you that we are here today to share some of our experiences, to let you know that if we could have done it, so can you. My experiences, why, how I came here, I don't know. I arrived. <laughs> but truly, it hasn't been um, such a bad experience because without this journey in life, I certainly would have not been able to be the person that I have grown up to be. Starting off in politics, and not knowing what you're getting into as a child of 15 was something that scared your parents out of their wits. Fathers in my time were very controlling. Mothers don't make decisions, but yet a child decides she wants to be part of a political struggle in your country when there was no democracy. I remember resisting the first um, initiation or invitation, and I resisted the second one and the third one I decided to accept, and then I was told I was accepting for all the wrong reasons. And then I accepted because I 
realize from that conversation that my role in all that was taking place in Guyana can contribute to a change. And uh, our moderator, Comrade Indra, spoke about us as women being agents of change. How did that change, how did that step into that new playground brought changes to my life? A child who was taken out of school because parents didn't believe that girl children had the right to higher education. Watching the late founder of the Women's Progressive Organization speaking at forums, Kamal Jani Jagan, watching our very own Indra Chandrapal, Gil Tishera, and other women, and ask yourself, can I ever be able to ventilate my feelings or the feelings of others the way they are doing. I thought not that perhaps I may never be able to get there. Secondly, this the time, the first time I was put in front of a group of women to speak for the first time, I was shaking from head to toe. Then I realized that you know what? In order for you to be what you want to be, you have to, to make the effort because there are so many women out there so many of our leaders who are prepared and ready and able to lend a hand and give you the direction you need to take to get there. And that is what we have all been given. We, we belong to an organization that has a, a glorious history, one that only propels you to do better than the people behind us or that the legacy they left for us. How can we match that? How can we better it in this modern 21st century of which we are the women who has to take this organization to levels that it never known before? Being in politics is not easy for women because as a woman you have to be a daughter, you have to be somebody's wife, you have to be somebody's children, a mother, somebody's friend, somebody's sister. And you are so multitask in all the responsibilities that are given to you. But one of the things that, that politics did, it brought out the best in you as a person and as an individual. And it makes you realize that, oh my God, I am capable of doing all of this and yet more. And every day there is so much more that we can do as women for women out there. And I remember sometimes when we, when, when I reach the crossroad in, in, and you have to make some decisions in life, I was told very clearly, you are not doing this for yourself alone as you have been doing it, but you are doing this because of the women who don't have a voice. You're voicing their issues, you're championing their problems, and you are creating or you are clearing a path so that they can walk safely to the That is Sheila Verasami. That is the person that I will continue to be. Thank you very much, Sheila. I like those words. You are a voice for the voiceless. <laughs> and I think all of us here, we are, vo we are voices for those who do not know how to express themselves. So um, we are proud of you. Our organization is proud of all the women who are panelists here, as well as you, the women out there, and the thousands of women out there in Guyana who have been associated with us for all these years. And as you know, our listeners, the Women's Progressive Organization was formed on the 27th of May, 1953. Do the maths, and you will see how long we have been out there working, leading, struggling, doing all the things that are required in the interest of women. And now we will ask our final panelist, Ms. Gillian burton Passot, to tell us about her journey. So Gillian, I'm sure you have a good story to tell. So let's hear it. Thank you, Andrew. And uh, good, uh, good uh, day to our listeners out there and to the women in the WPO, in the People's Progressive Party Civic, and also across Guyana. I want to wish you a happy and a proactive International Women's Day. My story is one that uh, can go on and on, 
but to just analyze the journey that I've had coming into the person that I am today. It started off that I was born in the East Rumbelt area, went to Kitty as a baby with my parents, and I lived there until I was an adult. I went to school there, had many friends, but I became a teenage mom at the age of 18. I had my first children, twins, and uh, then by the age of 21, I had my third child. So I was there at the age of 21 with three children. Did that stop me from going forward? No, I did not. I continued to qualify myself, work at it, and uh, in 1997, I saw this ad in the newspaper about the, a place called the Guyana Women's Leadership Institute. And I got interested in it because it offered so much from the ad. I went, I got enrolled, and one year after, I graduated at the top of my batch as the best graduating student from that um, institute, which taught me so much opened my appetite to want to know more about women, women in politics, women in leadership. After that, continuing to work in various agencies, both private and governmental, I continued to qualify myself. And uh, it was in um, around, I think, 1999, 2000, I entered into trade union work. I started at the level of a shop store with my union at the time, the Guyana Postal and Telecommunication Workers Union. I moved up the ranks and by the 2005, I became the general secretary of that union. And in 2007, I became the third female president of that union. And one month after, I became the first woman to become president of the Guyana Trades Union Congress. I started, I entered into politics at, uh, on the, tw uh, the 2006 elections when there was this one Guyana platform that the trade union movement would ask to be a part of. And I went there to represent labor. And uh, in 2011, I decided that I was going to take up the challenge and join the ranks of the People's Progressive Party Civic. And so I started my journey with the People's Progressive Party Civic. In 2011, I became a member of the Board of Directors of the Burbies Bridge and on the Board of Directors of the Guyana Women's Leadership Institute. 2015, I started to play a more vibrant role in the People's Progressive Party Civic. And after the results did come out, I was chosen to represent this wonderful party at the level of the National Assembly. So in a nutshell, that has been my journey. But it was not an easy one. I have for many years, I remained a single mom with five children. And I also had my share of domestic violence and abuse. I've been through it for like 30 years before emerging out of it. And so to women, I want to say, the sky's the limit. It just takes you to have the courage and to tell yourself, I can do it. I just have to begin the first step. I just have to try. And it is not when we talk about domestic violence, and you know, a lot of it comes around at this time on International Women's Day. They are not all bad men out there. I stand on the shoulders of quite a few men who encouraged me, who guided me, who nurtured me to get where I am today. And so, you know, it's like a 50-50. There are those who, because of being scared, they, they, they challenge you and they think that it's good to get physical to cover you while there are those who champion your cause and they give you the courage to go forward. And there are also many women on whose shoulders I also stand. And I've always looked at the life of Kermit Janet, a very vibrant, a very intelligent, and a woman who stood and spoke for the people. I've always read her stories, and I was always saying to myself, wow, this woman is real a powerhouse. And I've had the privilege of meeting her on about two or three occasions, and she always opened her hearts to the women across Guyana. 
she was a people's person and one who looked into the interests of women. And I saw that is why I think today when we look at the, the women in the WPO and the women from the People's Progressive Party saving the seats in Parliament, our call is to champion the cause of women because uh, our mother, the mother of the women in the People's Progressive Party, Janet Jagan, did that. And you have no other alternative than to emulate those v values. Well said, Jillian. Well, it is so true. And I'm glad you, you, you ended on the note with Janet Jagan. You know, this month of March is a very important month for us in the PPP, in the WPO, in the PYO. Because as a matter of fact, today there is going to be an observance at Lenora where our heroine, the heroine of the Women's Progressive Organization, Kausilia, there will be a commemoration activity. And also in this very month, we will be observing the death anniversary of Mrs. Janet Jagan, as well as Dr. Chetty Jagan on the 6th of March at Babu John. So we have quite an interesting month ahead of us, but you know what? March 18 is so critical and is so important for all of us who are present here. So on this side, we have four women leaders who are parliamentarians. And on the side of the audience, we have women who we hope will be counselors, will be the chairpersons, will be the change they want to be. Because we're hoping that whatever the stories you have heard from this end are stories that will emulate you and help you to go forward. And I want to reaffirm the point that was made by Jillian when she said, there are many shoulders and there are shoulders of men that we have stood on. Me, I'm a politician of 48 years. And you know what? It was my dad who encouraged me. In those days back, when women were not seen, or sh we were taught that women should be seen and not heard, or women shouldn't come out of the home after six o'clock in the afternoon, and women shouldn't cut their hair, and women shouldn't ride a bicycle, or women shouldn't ride, wear a slim skirt. But you know what? My dad encouraged me to break all those rules. So I support fully the sentiment expressed about the shoulders of the men that we have stood, in, stood on. The struggle for women's emancipation will never be complete unless we bring the men on board and we work hand in hand. So on International Women's Day, men out there, we're saying to you, come on board. Give the women the freedom they need. Give them the support. And you'll be shocked to see what a beautiful society and community we can carve out. Give them that support. They need it from you. And now, we want to turn our attention to you, the audience. And among you, we have people who will be vying for positions who are on their slate, this, their, their respective slates in, in their PR list and ca of candidates. And so we will start firstly by asking some of you to tell us about you, where, uh, where you're living and which NDC you will be contesting. And also, how do you feel about yourself in this whole process? Now, I don't want you to feel afraid. It's being in politics is like when you, you know people who smoke cigarette, or perhaps those people who rely on something to keep them going. Well, I'll tell you, if we don't have politics in our blood, I don't know how we will survive. That politics is part and parcel of you. And you know what? I asked a young lady who just came into politics nine months ago. I said, how you feel about yourself? She said, you know what, Comrade Intra, I'm so enthused. I am really, really enjoying this. And this is the kind of thing we would like to hear about. So I'll start first by asking Dermila. Come on, Dermila. Dermila, you are a late, you have come into this movement not at, the, at a very late stage. So I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing in your area. And then, what? how do you feel about your involvement? And all of this must not last more than two minutes. Let's see if you can do it. OK, my name is Dormala Dewarka. I'm representative from the Little Diamond Hostel in NDC. I'm the only woman leading the list on the East Bank. Also, I'm the cluster head and a con um, candidate for Constituency number three. Um, 
So, Darmila, how do you feel about this whole exercise? Has it been interesting for you? Very exciting. Mm -hmm. And what part is the excitement? Is it about working with the people or doing the fundraiser? Which part of it Both. is it exciting for you? Working with the people and mm -hmm. the fundraiser. Okay, so how do you feel about uh, yourself as a young woman uh, now entering into the field of politics as well as community activity. Do you feel good? And, Very and are you exciting. getting the support of your husband in all of this? Yes. Okay, all right. Well, thank you, Darmila. Well, I know, it, um, I must tell you, she's very young and pretty nervous. So listen, we all, and you heard Sheila saying, when she started out, she was shaking. Well, that is how we all feel. There is, you know, the first time, but later on I'll be, I will be, shocked to see you because I ha you have shocked me when I see the passion and the enthusiasm. But hold on, it will come. And now let's go to Alice, a more experienced head. Come on, Alice, tell us a little bit about you. Good to the panel and to the audience. I'm Sergey Abdin, also known as Alice. I'm from the industry, WPU group, and also the PPP group. I'm very proud and honored to be here today to represent my constituency, constituency as a candidate. And I am from Plaisance Industry, NDC. I will, I'm contesting this election, the local government election, because I'm happy to be a part of it. And so, um, uh, what, have you been involved in the house to house work, meeting residents? What is the feedback you get? Of course, Kamadentra. I always in the verification process, and um, the reaction we get, we get good support from the people in the area. Okay. Well, we're happy to hear that. So let's hear Sherry. What have you got to tell us, Sherry? Pleasant good afternoon to all the panelists. Madam Moderators, I am from the Monrepo area. My name is Sherry Das, and I'm not afraid of the mic because I can sing better on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> so don't sing, no, you don't. <laughs> no, I won't, but I'm accustomed to it. But today, it's a blessing, and it's an opportunity to tell the, the women in Guyana, Happy International Women's Day. And you know, in another couple of days from now, we'll be overpowered. I am overpowered because as a Central Committee member of the WPO, I can tell you that the work is not easy, but as long as you rub shoulder with our GS and Cambodia, you don't have anything to worry about. Oh, really? <laughs> I can get them at any moment, and even now if I said GS, share a meeting for me, be my guest speaker. Maybe she wants to refuse me, but she just can't. Okay. So you gotta know how to target You're irresistible, you right? Yes, <laughs> All right, thank you, Sherry. Can you pass the mic to the other colleague at the back? Tell us about your experience and who you are. The Good afternoon. People out there Good would like to know. To the panel. My name is Melissa Ferguson. I'm from constituency two. That's Kitty. I am the constituency candidate. And at the moment, I am enjoying it. I can't complain. Okay. Okay. And what, what are you enjoying? I enjoy the house to house, mm -hmm. going out, meeting the residents hearing the, the concern and sit with like the business people hearing their concern. Mm -hmm. All right, good. So you are in your house to house work. Is there anything special? Is there a situation that you want to share with us? Well, the only thing that really touched me in Kitty is the market. Okay. That's the only thing that touched me at this moment. Because you grew up in Kitty because and you know what? Because my grandmother sells Kitty Market for years. My mom, now my aunt is there. And to see the things that are going at, on at the market, it's really touching. Okay. And I'm sure they're removing the old people to put new people, right? Yes. Yeah, that's the trend, my dear. All right, so let's hear from the other. Um, good, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Vanessa Sharpman. I'm the first time um, candidate for industry okay but and i'm enjoying it because it's the first time i'm doing it i'm going house to house doing the checking of the name on the list and going about doing the raffle and everything that we're doing 
Are you getting the support? Yes, I'm getting the support because I'm a vendor of industry market. Okay. And I know every role at industry. So tell me one important thing in industry you would like to change when you become the when you get in as a counselor. Well, for me, I would like to see our drainage mm -hmm. clean, the street lights. Okay. The um well, the young the youths. I need more take activities for the young ones. Okay, and you do have grounds in, in, in yes, your area? Yes, we have an industry ground. Well, we want you to be the agent of change in your council. Well, that's a battle To ensure that uh, more activities are organized for the youth, all right? Yes. So you feel good about I yourself in this whole I'm process? Proud. Yes. Okay, basically. I'm getting all the support from my friends, uh -huh. family, and everybody. Lovely. Thank all right, you. good. Thank you very much. Let's take um, Shirley. Good afternoon, ladies yeah. and um, the panel. Yeah. Um, I should s uh, would like to say happy International Women's to all our women in the WPO and uh, across Guyana. I know we have come a long way and we have a long way more to go. My name is Basmati Prasad Noguna Shirley. I am on the PR list, Triumph Baby. For me, I find uh, it's a duty to do what I'm doing and it's one I would like to give my all to. There's a lot to be done in Triumph, and I'm hoping that um, the people that we are going to put in there, I am actually in the background, but focusing, and I think they listen to me, and we make um, plans as what we have to do. All right, Shirley, so um, is there anything in particular that you would like to see happening in Triumph? Yes, we have more drainage, and garbage cleaning, mm -hmm. garbage collecting, we have roads to do, bridges to make, something that's, um, that's been neglecting for a long while. Okay. And um, we have to pay a lot of attention to that. All right, so um, what about uh, your role in, um, let us say, beautification? And I want all of you to think about that. How can you, as counselors, as chairpersons, whoever, to initiate some new ideas into the council? We want not only to clean garbage and that, those are things we always do, but how about talking about more social activities for the elderly, for the children? What about safe places for the children? What about somewhere where the young people can have events and training and school dropout programs and so on? So I would like some of you to also focus on that, and that is why as women, when we talk about you being agents of change, you have to go up there and try to shake up, ha, as we say, the, the administration mm -hmm. to see things in a different way. Well, uh, so far, um, in regarding to the older folks, we do um, pay a lot of attention more, I think, to the older folks. But um, as the programs and things for the younger children, uh, we have been trying, but um, I know we need to focus more on that, and that's something that we plan to do in the future and having workshop, because I have been uh, encouraging some people to, to the institute we're having at Kovanjaan, and there are some people that I sent there, and um, also to the training we have at um, Mondrigo. Okay. So um, maybe in committee-wise, yes, later, maybe we can have a bottom house set up where we can train people right into the committee. But later down, we, think we will be thinking about that. And you feel good about yourself, Shirley, in yes, this whole process? Yes, I do. It, okay. it has always been a challenge for me, and um, I know there is a lot out there that we have to do. Okay, yeah. great. So yes. thank you very much. I know these other ladies are not candidates, but would you care to wish the women out there happy International Women's Day? And uh, would you want to say something to the women of Guyana who, who are watching you? Okay, good afternoon, ladies. And uh, I wish to, to greet everyone and all a happy Women's International Day. Thank and where you. are you from? I'm from Industry Krangna. My and name is Rukmin Hussein, known as Sita. And Sita, are you engaged in the house to house work as well? Yeah, we are trying. Are you enjoying are trying, it? Yes, we are uh -huh. trying our best. Are we getting the support in industry? Surely, yes. Good, good. So we will continue doing that, right? That's right. Okay, thank you, my thank dear. You. All right, so let's take my other colleague there. Hello, good afternoon, women. I am from the WPYO, oh. and I um, love this PPP. So I stay with this PPP because one time, the f from the starting about three years, I, um, Sheila Verzami introduced me to this 
house to house, go and get these people to come out to work, and I involved with this still. So I love this party and working with them, so I feel happy. Okay. And I want to continue doing that, what I'm doing. Well, we're happy also to have you as one of the persons who are out there in the fields because, you know, that's where the action is, to be yes. able to talk to people. Yes, that so, is a very important thing. All right, so. so we're happy to have you as one of the agents of change in the industry yes. area. All right? Yes. So thank you very much. Okay. And now let's pass the mic to the others at the back. Okay. Tell us a little bit about uh, uh, yourself. Good afternoon, everyone. Panelists, all women. Happy International Women's Day to you all. I'm from the Monrepo area. Have been in politics quite some years ago. Sheila and I are colleagues way back in studying days. Um, I stayed away for some time, but I'm happy to be back. Happy to be part of the local government election, representing my area, Monrepo. Um, what can I say? How can I make a change? You always hear in our area, oh, they got this woman doing something or this man doing something. Well, I'm there. I am going to be there because we will win this election. And I'm going to make a difference in my area. Show them how we can beautify the market, get the grounds done, get people involved. And I have my other colleagues who are here from Monrepo too. We will collaborate as a team and get things done. Very encouraging words, and that is the way we have to make the change, by working with others and getting them on board and through collaboration. Would you want to share anything else with us in terms of how you feel about this process? Well, as an educator, I'm a trained te teacher by profession, um, going house to house, verifying people's name. Take, for example, this afternoon we have a, a bottom house meeting, as we should call it. People are not yet educated much about what local government is. They're still confused. So as we are going around now and getting the people involved, they're coming to come. The understanding is getting there. So we are getting there. OK. Well, I think, um, thanks, my dear. Yes, Thank let's you. take the other sister next to you, please. Agnes. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, panel. My name is Agnes Passal. I'm representing constituency one, but I have a difference. I have a, um, what should I say, an opposition who is a male. That's fine. And it's a little difficult to compete with a male, but to be honest, I find it very um, challenging, and I'm getting the work done. In terms of going around and doing the house to house, you find sometimes you get negative things, sometimes you get positive, but you try talking to the people and get, get the work, the words out there, get the work done. And you're kind of getting them to see what this local government thing is all about, how important it is for them. And um, in terms of women, to get women to know how important they are. If you can clean your own home, then you can Certainly able to clean, clean it a little wider area and a little and more better. Um, for being in Monrepo's North, our area, seeing that we have the entire NDC, needs an avatar. We really needed an avatar because we have three markets there. And the slaughtering on the roads is not healthy. Mm -hmm. And I think we needed an avatar in the area so that you wouldn't have that smelly market and all those different things. Um, in the area. Okay. And what about the market itself? Do you all have plans to do some fixing up of that Oh, market? yeah, we do. There are three of us here, as what my colleague just said, and we have a few things planned as women, and um, I think we will get it done. Well, I'm so happy, and I like the enthusiasm. It is excellent, you know, because you are talking as if, you know, you're with a lot there. of conviction, a lot of confidence. Yeah. And that is the way you have to go into this new area with confidence, with determination to yeah. show that you're not backing down Thank at all. Thank you. Well, at least I'm getting some uh, help from the men, which I wasn't expecting. Okay. But seeing that they're behind you gives you the courage to do more. Mm -hmm. 
Great, Thank great. You. Well, we want to wish you all the best. I know uh, Monrepo area is a very dynamic area. The point you raise about the tree markets, it is so true. But you know, we want to challenge you from this side here, that we want you women to go out, go out there and within a year, get that market fixed because we would like to see the transformation in the market. And we want you to use it as a tourism. It must be used as tourism also, because you know what? When you go to that market, it is so huge and you have all kinds of fresh food and all the fish, if you like fish, the varieties of fish there. So we would like to challenge you women to go and fix that place so that when we talk about women being the agent of change, you are indeed the change agent and we want you to be so. So thank you, thank Aunt you. Agnes, and let's pass the mic to the other colleague. Um, who is not a candidate, but she may have something she wants to say to the women out there. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Yeah. I'm Mrs. Wilhelm. I'm from industry, and I'm from the WPO group. I wish to, I wish to congratulate all the women's on Women's Day, mm -hmm. and I work along with the party a long way. Okay. I try to assist whenever called out. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Vera Sami always calling me. And I try to get things done, well, whatever could be done. Well, we're happy for all the support you're giving to us. And thank you very much for your wishes. And so let's hear the, uh, okay, so we will now have a situation whereby you, the audience, will have an opportunity to ask our panelists any question in terms of a challenge they may have faced. You can sit, my dear. Thank you. So you can ask any of the panelists any question. So you are entitled to ask them one question. We'll take only six questions because we are soon getting to the time when we have to conclude our program for today. So any question, who will start the ball rolling? I would like to ask Ms. Virsavi, um, seeing that she's a new par parliamentarian, and um, what I would like to know, it's um, uh, when she came back from her studies, she got married at a young age. What is this like when you had to put your political career aside and um, go into this new, what should I say, a new life of a husband and um, raising kids? What was, what was the challenge you faced and knowing that you had to give up what you had planned to do? Excellent question. <laughs> Let's hear it, Sheila. Uh, when I got married, my husband came into PYU, and um, he was there with me, and um, we used to go to all the meetings and activities. And then, because I was very outspoken and, and was involved in everything, he started off with the jealousy issue. And um, it started where the problem started then was, was um, him wanting to be there with me all the time when I'm in any activity or go to any community. And of course, uh, that was not possible because at that time I stopped working for a period of time and he was working, so I had more time on hand. So we started to fight. But of course, you know, you, you just got married, these things tend to happen. But Gradually, he became um, understanding of um, trust was built in the relationship. So he quickly grew to understand that she's not going out there to flirt with anyone, but to basically to lend a hand, to get involved with people, and to actually learn from people as you go along. What, what was remarkable about it is that he gradually which was fortunate for me, he gradually got involved more deeply too with politics and he started to work with Kamachetti while I stayed in the field. What became a little difficult was when the children came along. That was when I, I took what you call um, a lull in politics, but not, um, I was not getting involved in uh, at Freedom House in, in several activities, but I was always involved at the grassroots level. I, I think in my mind, looking back at all the years, I never ever left politics at the grassroots level. Every single election from 1980 until 
this local government elections. I'm integrally involved in almost everything. Thank you, Sheila. I'm, I'm glad you brought those points out because what is a lesson here? That we have to bring our partners on board and sometimes it's good to bring them, let them see what you're doing so they don't have to worry and get jealous, right? And collaboration, cooperation, these are the key words, getting them involved and you have children as well. So it's also good to get your children involved and from time to time ask their opinion, what they think. Is there something they can guide you about? So that, I would say, is, a, is um, advice we would want to give to all of you. Now let's take the second question. Anybody very quickly? And you can ask another one of the panelists. Pleasant good afternoon. My question is to, um, from the Pauline Sakai. How do you see we as young women getting into politics and one day want to sit where you're sitting? <laughs> Uh, a very, very relevant question. Um, for me, the work that I do, I suppose um, I do it because I believe that women, whether what age, young or old, can be the change. And for me, seeing all of you who are now vying as candidates in the local government election, it makes us proud that the work that we do for the party and for those who are actively involved in the WPO, um, empowering the women, I believe it is the achievement and that they are and the successes that they hope that the work that the WPO has done is is now realizing um, the kind of caliber of candidates for the local government. For, so for me, I see you as um, championing the change, championing development. And I'm sure that none of us are indispensable, and we need a broad circle or broad group of cadres who will be able to take on the task where we are today. We will never be here forever. So I'm happy that all of you have decided that you are now prepared and, and are ready, and you have some passion about doing things for your community, for your country and being the, the agent of change, which I believe is a theme that so, um, the moderator has devised for this program. Okay, well, thank you, Pauline. Um, and not a, a very good response to your question. And I do believe, as, as she has said, when the WPO started out, what was it we talked about? What was the message there and then? That we want our women to become educated. Educa education for us was critical in an environment where women didn't have the opportunity, where more than 90% of the people were not literate. And hence, in order for women to grow and to become involved, they had to become educated. So what was our, what was our philosophy as an organization? What was it we, the call that we made out there was women, please, and we said to the parents, Please educate your girl children. Give them an opportunity so they can grow. My God, when you look at the statistic today, you're, you're amazed to see how much women have come forward and we are doing exceedingly well. Today we have one third women in parliament. We, had mo we have more than 60% of those who are graduating from the university are women. Our women have certainly broken the glass ceiling and now, we're gonna go to the final question and any one of you are free to ask Gillian a question. My question would be directed to her. It's not so much a question, but what would be your advice to us as women now coming into politics, we should say, and you're there, you had a lot of challenges, we can say. What's your advice to us? Well, my advice to women coming into politics at this time or at any time, one, you have to have the love for what you're about to do. My father always said to me, never do anything if you don't love doing it. And that has been my motto throughout my career. I love whatever I go to do, I make sure I love it. And so for you to come into politics, you've got to love politics. You have to love caring for people, taking care of their issues, listening to them, working with them. You have to be able to balance your work with your family life. 
because uh, sometimes it could happen uh, that you put too much effort into your work and uh, then your family life suffer. And uh, I often tell women that children never ever forgive you for shortchanging them along the way. So you have to be able to balance your home life and to balance your work life. And you have to have the passion and never forget that there are women out there who are looking at you as the persons that they will want to be their role model. And so you have to live your life in a certain way where women can draw energy from you, where they can draw virtue and substance from you to push their life, channel their lives forward. So as Comrade Angel has been saying, a woman in politics is a woman who is an agent of change because whatever you do, it goes forward to change the lives of women out there at the grassroots level. And you have to ensure that no matter how high you go in politics or any fear of work within your life, never forget the women who are struggling to get somewhere. They're the most important facets of your work and the people who you should pay more attention to. And never forget also that when you reach certain pinnacles, as I did in the trade union movement, there will be challenges. And you have to put all your women, woman instinct into overdrive <laughs> to keep getting there, to keep working at it. When I became president of the Trade Union Congress, persons shouted, oh, we've broken the glass ceiling finally. But I want to say to you today, and even to the women listening out there, that is a myth. We have not even touched the glass ceiling as yet. <laughs> There's so much work for us to do. So that would be my um, words to all women. Keep at it. Love what you do. Stay involved. But just remember, balance the family life with the work life, and you will get there. Thank you. Well said again. My goodness, what a mouthful. But here, ladies, you are aspiring politicians. You are going into your NDCs, and you're going to make a number of changes. But you know, in order to be good at what you do, I agree. We know as women, and we call ourselves the CEOs of the home, and you have heard us talking to you. When people ask you who you are, please don't ever say you are a housewife. You are the chief executive officer of the home, and you have to balance so much things on a, bit, on a daily basis. So what we're saying to you, Learn how to balance your life because anyone who can manage, and you, if you're good at management, you must be good at balancing all the things in your life. Men, children, family, responsibility, self. You have to know how to balance. Anytime it off balance, something happens. So I remember from someone who had been very good at it, Mrs. Mrs. Janet Jagan, when she said to me, you want to be a successful woman? You want to be successful in politics? Learn how to balance. And if you can do that, you will certainly succeed. My next advice I will want to give to you is do not ever forget where you come from. And always remember the women who don't have a voice. When you can give them a voice, then you are a successful leader. And I always believe that when you're leading, always look back at you. And if you don't see anyone behind you, you're not a good leader. If you have lots of people behind you, you are a successful leader. And the other advice I will say, never do something because you want to look good or because it is something that is, uh, how you say, the fashionable. it's fashionable. You must do it from the heart. It, empathy must come from the heart. You got to learn to do it from the heart, you must give love. And when you give love, you will receive love. When you give respect, you receive respect. And respect is never something that you must demand. It is something that you must earn, earn it. And all of you, as you go about your next few days in the realm of your local government work, we want you to remember these words because we all learn it the hard way. And we don't want to, for you to go and reinvent the wheel. We want to share those ideas with you, those experiences that we have achieved, or we ourselves have, have experienced them, so that you can be successful 
in whatever you seek to do. And on this International Women's Day, once again, we wish all the Guyanese women the very best. And we hope that next time around, when we talk again, we will be seeing lots of women out there as counselors in the realm of local democracy. Once again, happy International Women's Day and all the best. And we want to conclude with a song from Katy Perry when she said, you must go out there and change. You have to be the change girl. We want you to be the change girl and go out there and roar and roar at your highest volume of your voice. Roar and be the agent of change. Once again, thank you very much and a blessed International Women's Day.